I quite often get asked about um, painting different types of coastal foliage and the like. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a, a, a little exercise that's around banksia trees. Um, and I've just roughed in a little um, canvas here so that we can run through the process um, and you can see how they're struck constructed. You might be surprised that it's a lot simpler than you think. What I've done here is I've uh, blocked in a, a background. It's not too exciting, but um, if you want the colors uh, somewhere on YouTube here, there's some recipes and I've got a recipe book that uh, has all of these in it. Um, I'm just gonna leave that sort of indistinct. The colors are all we're gonna worry about in the background. And now I'll paint some trees over the top. And I think we'll start with a banksia and we'll, I'll do two versions, one a kind of an older tree that's kind of scraggly and broken down and another one that's newer and fresher and it's got the, the, a more regular pattern to its leaves. But we'll go through the process of constructing it purely and simply as far as shapes are concerned and then add colour to that. Okay. I've mixed uh, dioxazine purple, well actually I've mixed forest green with some dioxazine purple. Um, and that's my sort of foundation color for the shadows for the most part. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna brush in two trees, one that's uh, old and beaten up and one that's kind of newer and fresher. And the reason that I'm doing that is because they both have very distinctive patterns. Um, and the reason I'm pointing that out is because it's really important to look at the shapes a, trees, a tree makes. Every species of tree has a slightly different outline and a slightly different shape some are like cauliflower and some are like pine you know the pine cones are pointy and all that sort of thing so we want to be mindful of that when we construct our tree so this one here i'm just going to do this and create some darker areas now as these trees get a little bit older and more beaten up like that they end up with more holes in them leaves kind of break off and all that sort of thing so i'm just doing that and I'm just rolling the brush because it gives me a nice random kind of mark like that and this is the first color of probably five but at least a bare minimum of three okay so that'll do for the older tree for the moment now, same type of tree, but this one's smaller and it's more dense. So it hasn't kind of got all leggy and all the gaps in the foliage or anything yet, but it does have these kind of branches, which I'm kind of just starting to get in there now. It does have these branches that kind of go out like that and then the branches, the little leaves come off that. So I'll put that there. Okay, and that'll get me out of trouble for the moment. I'm just going to change brushes now. So I've mixed up some French ultramarine blue, a little bit of dioxazine purple, um, some white and a tiny bit of cadmium yellow medium just to kind of warm it up a little bit. And I'm just going to create the impression of the light coming through. Now because this tree, this is the shadow on the sand, because this tree is um, quite broken up and it's a little bit older I'm just going to leave a little bit of separation there so it looks as though it's above the you know the a little bit higher up above the ground and you'll notice too that I can actually form the sand dunes too by changing the shapes of those shadows and I won't spend too much time with that, but this is, you know, just to get a start. Like that. And this other tree over here, it's a little bit denser and younger. So I'm gonna tuck the shadow right up underneath like that. And again, look, these are just sort of quick versions of it, but So it gives you an insight into the constructions. Okay. 
So that little bit of purple there is um, really useful because it puts the trees in the correct plane. So this one looks a little bit closer to you and this one's a little further away. And the fact that I've broken up the shadows um, creates the impression or broken up the shadows of this one creates the impression of more light coming through. Now, obviously I'd do a bit more to that. I'd have more blues in the shadows here and probably some paler bits out here in the sun. We're not gonna worry about that too much right now. We're just gonna focus on the foliage, but I just kind of feel like, felt like I needed to put that in so that it, at least they weren't just hovering in midair. <laughs> okay, so here I'm using the same color that I started with originally, that dioxazine purple forest green combination, but I've added a little bit of cadmium yellow medium to that just to lighten it up a little bit and to give it a little bit of suggestion of highlights here and there. And with that second color, you can kind of fix up any imperfections in the original marks. And I come out here and there on the edges of those leaves. Some of those leaves will be out in the sunlight like that. I'm using this little brush from Mikador and it's great um, for getting those lovely little leaf shapes without too much effort. It holds plenty of paint and um, it's nice and soft so you can sort of, it doesn't feel like you're pushing into the surface of the canvas too much. Easy to control. Okay, so that's quite subtle. So I've gone a little bit lighter this time just to, you know, create that lovely impression of now just a little tip when you start getting down into this darker area when the tree's older don't make too much form with your brush strokes so you know create a few high spots and a few low spots but as i've said the as they get older they get kind of scraggly and the way you create the illusion of that scraggliness <laughs> is to just sort of mix up the brush strokes a bit here and there to create the impression of leaves going in different directions. And it creates also the impression that there's a lot of light filtering through. So while there are some forms to some of these branches, it's also quite chaotic, but with a pattern. <laughs> I'm going to leave this area down here quite dark. I'll just put the odd one here and there because I don't want to create too much light getting in there. Okay, so now again, coming back to this younger tree, Colors are roughly the same, although the older trees do tend to have more browns in them. But I'm just going to make more of a fuss of those shapes. And you'll see that they have these funny little branches that grow out like that, here and there. And they sort of emerge out of the shadows, which is quite lovely. Again, similar process, but you'll notice that I'm being a little bit more mindful of the shapes of the, um, the bush here. And you should be able to start to see, you know, some of the little branches em emerging out of, the, out of the, the depths of the shadows. Okay, so I'm literally going to continue repeating this process but banksias have a lot of white in them especially on the underside of the leaves so i'm going to add some more yellow and more white okay so <laughs> i guess go back to the process but i'm being a little bit more mindful now of this lighter color you have to probably be a little more careful about your application now you want to create the impression of some branches 
sort of poking out into the sun. So for example, I want to leave, create the impression of this branch poking out here a little bit like that. So I'll do that. And I know that that will have some more highlights and that should in theory, make it look as though it's popping out of the shadow into the sun. It'll look more obvious when I get down here. The odd little spot down there. So I'm not working from a reference photo here, I'm just kind of relying on my memory, um, which may or may not be a mistake. But if you are looking, working from a reference photo, um, and I do recommend that before you do do that, you go out and look at the trees, like just sit and look for a little while. Um, worst case scenario, your blood pressure will drop. But if you sort of sit and look at the trees for a little while, you'll start to see that they do have a pattern. What is not a bad idea when you look at your um, reference photo see if you can break it up into sort of a the darkest color and look at it looking at the darkest color the lightest color and then an intermediate color somewhere in there and you'll be able to see if you can look at it in the lightest color you'll be able to get a sense of where the sun's coming from and how it hits the tips of the branches and how that or, or the leaves and how that creates the shape of the tree um, that's one of the difficult things about painting nature is, is that you, you have to find the thing that makes it look like it. <laughs> and sadly, well not sadly, the joyful thing about that is that you get to sit in nature for a while. Hmm. So I'm just going to a couple more highlights here and there. Like that. And again, I'll keep repeating this process. And of course you'd have more highlights towards the top, like that. So we're back onto our younger tree now and it's the same principle in that I'm just adding highlights like that to all of the branches that I think are going to be out in the sun like this and I actually repeat this process maybe five six times with different colors but each time I almost repeat exactly the same process I just paint less leaves <laughs> and I paint the leaves that I think will be being hit by the sun. And that, of course, is also part of the plant's pattern. So it should start to look a little bit as though we can see leaves poking out of the shaded areas into the sunlight. So I used that same color as I used before, but this time I've added more white to it. And this time cadmium yellow light. If you use cadmium yellow medium, it tends to make it look later in the afternoon. If you use the cadmium yellow light, it tends to make it look more like the daylight. I have a whole pile of theories about that, but we won't go into them right now. Um, so, and again, as I said before, it's literally the same process, but with this older tree, can break up the patterns a little bit you know create the suggestion that some of the form is still there but that as it's got older and shedded leaves and all that all that neatness has come out of it Oops.
if you do do a bit of a blob like that don't worry about it too much you can always cure it the next time around or of course if it's Banksia flowering season just put a flower there <laughs> So I'm just going to again repeat that same process but this time again this this younger one here has more of a, def, a definite kind of pattern And you'll notice that the Banksia leaves kind of curl up a little bit. So I'm using that little brush stroke there. So I've added again, a little bit more white, <laughs> a little bit more yellow, cad yellow uh, light. And again, just here and there. Like that. And again, going back over to my younger tree, exactly the same thing, putting highlights on, but just being a little more mindful. So I've mixed some uh, burnt umber and French ultramarine blue, and that's kind of my Banksia tree in the shadows color. <laughs> and I'm just going to drag it down here like that and spread it out a bit at the bottom there like that. And it's not a bad idea just to hold your paintbrush a little bit further back like that. Just roll it here and there and you get that lovely broken kind of dead branch thing that they do. <laughs> quite often just get a bit of that color in there here and there a couple of dead leaves I'll just put a little bit here because there's that those leaves were just hanging out in space you might have noticed that I swapped to a scraggly brush for this um, it kind of makes those nice scratchy kind of branch shapes when you drag it over. I wring every little millimetre out of my brushes. Now this, this tree doesn't have a lot of branches sticking out of it. It's only young so it's, you know, we, we might just do that just to kind of create the impression and maybe just one like that here and there. Okay, so I'm, I'm using exactly the same colour. And I'm just going to paint in a few of those Banksia cobs. Now, if you notice, they always seem to, or usually seem to point straight up. So all you need to do is get that sort of dead timber color and put a couple of those cobs pointing up like that. And your imagination seems to do the rest. Might just tick a little one there and one there. I'm using the same brush that I used to do the leaves just because it, it gives that lovely shape. It's a bit softer, a little bit easier to control. So one of the great things about painting is it's your painting, you can do whatever the hell you want. So I kind of like the idea of bumping up the shadows and because I want this to be a nice warm day, I'm going to make the shadows quite warm here and there. So I've just got neat dioxazine purple 
and I'm just going to get in here like this in some of the shadows and you'll see that, that gives the picture gives this lovely little kind of depth in those darker areas but just keeps it warm and you might want to experiment I've actually got a little bit too much water with that so I want that much stronger and by the time you whack a few of those in there here and there like that you've got some lovely shadows and it's just another little bit of color something interesting a couple of those cobs are going to be quite dark And by mixing up those uh, brush strokes like that, it's all adding to that illusion of kind of chaos and scraggliness. That hole is bothering me. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm gonna do the same over here. Let me get right down in there like that. Now some of you might find that purple a little bit too strong, but I like it. <laughs> Quite often when the light hits a leaf, gets backlit and there's this lovely golden yellow color so we'll just whack a few of them in there here's there so I'm just using this cad yellow medium neat and I'm just putting it here and there strategically because when the light shines through leaves you get this lovely backlit kind of greeny gold color and this is kind of a cheetah's way of getting that and you add another not a little flash of colour into the picture, just more of the story. And I'll do the same thing over here, but again, staying with the shapes that I've created. And you can whack some down in the shadows like that too. So I mixed permanent alizarin, cadmium yellow medium, and a little bit of white. and. Um, don't be too sort of hard and fast with that because there's a really broad range of colors that you can do with Banksias. You can tend more towards the, the um, permanent alizarin and, and white kind of thing. But anyway, this is just a nice way of getting a bit more color in like that. And the cobs are actually the dead flowers. And remember we said that the cobs tend to point straight up. So I'll just point the flowers straight up like that. And this young ones. The flowers quite often grow out of it towards the top of those branches. So, so I've just added white and cad yellow uh, light. Thinned it out a little bit too much, but anyway, just wanted to get a few more highlights in there. There's a lovely sort of silvery green color on the underside of a Banksia leaf. And while I'm not representing them exactly, this sort of helps with that illusion. And you can see that that's quite discordant and broken up. And this one will be much more. And I put the flowers in before I did this because some of these highlights are going to be in front of some of the flowers. So I say it looks more realistic. So I'm not really happy with this in here. So I'm just going to bump that up a little bit. Establish that a bit more. There we go. So 
So this is white thinned and I'm just going to create the impression that the light's hitting some of these branches. Like that. And that kind of adds to the scraggliness of it all. And this one's quite young, so it's not a lot of light getting in there. That's Banksia's 101. <laughs> so that's um, Banksia's 101. Obviously there's a little bit more to it here and there, but you know, I'm, I'm really happy with the outcome with the information that we've got so far. I don't use actually much more than this when I do my proper paintings. Um. So if you want to have a bash at that yourself, um, there's a list of all the materials and everything you'll need uh, in the description. Mm. If that was useful and you enjoyed it, make sure you like and subscribe and become one of our wonderful members who we adore. <laughs> Thanks so much.